which is the beginning of one of the most useful things I'm going to teach you this year. And it is about trigonometry. So when you, heard the word, when you hear the word trigonometry, you should think about triangles, angles, and sides. So trigonometry, by definition, is the study of relationships of the sides and angles of right triangles. So remember, a right triangle is just any triangle that has a right angle in it. We're going to do a lot of talk of ratios this unit, so trigonometric ratios. And when we talk about a ratio, a ratio is just when we look at two side lengths of a triangle and we basically make a fraction out of those side lengths. The three main trig ratios are sine, which is abbreviated S-I-N, cosine, which is abbreviated C-O-S, and tangent, which is abbreviated T-A-N. And you're going to see the sine, cosine, and tangent show up all over the place, um, pretty much in every math class you take from here on out. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is we're just going to introduce what the sine, cosine, and tangent are. If you have any right triangle, what you're going to first see is you're going to see this little theta symbol down here. That little circle, it kind of looks like a zero with a line through it. That's a Greek letter called theta, and we use it to designate an angle. So once we designate an angle, then we're going to label our sides opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So remember that the hypotenuse should be easy. That one's always across from the right angle. If you take your theta, wherever your angle is, and draw a line to the side across from it, that's always the opposite. And then adjacent means next to. So the adjacent side is right next to the angle. <clears throat> then when you start looking at the sine, cosine, and tangent, we're going to say the sine of theta is equal to the fraction opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now you're going to want to have these fractions memorized. And so one common way that people remember them is with this acronym down here, SOKOTOA. So you're going to hear me say SOKOTOA all the time. This is what I'm talking about. What SOKOTOA tells you is that it reminds you that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. And let's look at what it means to actually use those. <clears throat> so when you get to a problem where it asks you to find the trig ratios, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a right triangle, which we do. Then you're going to figure out where is your theta. So in this case, our theta is in the top right corner of the triangle. Then we need to label our sides opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. I like to start with the hypotenuse because that's, a new, that's not a new one. We've known that from before. The hypotenuse is the side that's across from the right angle. Then I'm going to identify the opposite. So the side that's across from the theta is the opposite. And the side that's right next to it is the adjacent. <clears throat> and now I'm going to start identifying the sine, cosine, and tangent. This is where it's important to think about the SOKOTOA. So if I want to know the sine, I need to look at the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the opposite side length in this case is 8, and the hypotenuse is 10. So my sine is 8 over 10. Since that's a fraction that I can simplify, I'll go ahead and simplify it to 4 over 5. Next one is cosine. So I look back at my kind of cheat sheet up here. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So my adjacent side length is 6. My hypotenuse is 10. I'll simplify that to 3 over 5. And then my tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So that's 8 over 6, which I can simplify to 4 over 3. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm just creating fractions. You have to create the right fractions, though, which is where an understanding of what sine, cosine, and tangent are going to be critical. So SOKOTOA, burn that into your brain. All right, so another example. So here I have my theta value. I'm going to go ahead and label the hypotenuse. The side across from the theta is the opposite. And then the adjacent is the 10. 
<clears throat> if you don't label these right, then you're not going to get any of the rest of the problem right. So let me just review that one more time. You find the right angle, side across from it, that's the hypotenuse. Okay. Then you find your theta value, the side across from it is the opposite. And then your leftover side, that's the adjacent. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to find my fraction. So my sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I have 2 square roots of 11 over 12. Now notice that I have a square root, and that's fine. I can have a square root in my answer. But I can do a little bit of simplifying here. If I just look at the numbers that are outside of the square root, the 2 and the 12, I can simplify that to 1 over 6. That's the same as the square root of 11 over 6. My cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which I can simplify to 5 over 6. And then the tangent is the opposite side, so 2 square roots of 11, over the adjacent, which is 10. And again, if I'm simplifying a fraction that has a square root, I'm just going to look at the numbers. So this turns into the square root of, oh, that should be the square root of 11. Typo, my bad. Square root of 11 over 5. Okay. Let's go ahead and do example C really fast. So one thing you'll notice as I start to look at this triangle is that I actually only know two of the side lengths of the triangle. But I need to know all three. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to find that third side length. So I'm going to do 12 squared plus 5 squared is equal to my c squared. Square the 12, square the 5, add them together and take the square root, and I will get 13. So that's going to be this third side of my triangle. Once I have all my side lengths, then I'm going to think about my theta. And I'm going to label my sides opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. Okay. And then I'm going to create my fraction. So the sine is always the fraction opposite over hypotenuse. So I take my opposite side length and put it over my hypotenuse side length. Cosine is always the adjacent side length over the hypotenuse length, so 12 over 13. The tangent is always the opposite over the adjacent, so 5 over 12. All right. Okay, on the next page, we're going to do just a couple more examples, and then I'll set you guys loose to practice this on your own. Notice in all three of these examples, we are going to need to find the third missing side length. We only know two of the three sides. So let's do a couple examples of this. So in example D, I'm going to need to do the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that when we do the Pythagorean theorem, you always do your hypotenuse squared is equal to the two shorter sides squared. Okay, you're going to want your calculator for this. Let me get mine out. So we're going to do 17 squared. That's 289 is equal to x squared plus whatever 15 squared is, 225. You're going to do 289 minus 225. Keep going up here. So 64 is equal to x squared. Take the square root of both sides, and my 8 is equal to x. So this third side length, then, is 8. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and switch colors for labeling my triangle, because I've got a lot of blue going on. So I'm gonna, now I'm going to label opposite adjacent hypotenuse. The side across from my right angle is the hypotenuse. This is my theta. So the side right across from it is the opposite. And the side next to it is the adjacent. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and fill in our fractions now. So the sign will always be the opposite over the hypotenuse, so 15 over 17. Cosine will always be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so 8 over 17. And the tangent will always be the opposite over the adjacent, so 15 over 8. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and stick through one more example together. 
just so that we can make sure that we know how to find missing side lengths if there's a square root. So I need to find this third side length of my triangle, which is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to take the two shorter sides, the square root of 13 squared plus 6 squared. That's going to equal my hypotenuse squared. Now here's the thing to remember. If you square a square root, those two cancel out, and you're just left with the 13. You square the 6 to get 36. So then you have 13 plus 36. I really should have left you guys some more room on this, sorry. So then my x is equal to 7. Okay, so now I know that this third side is 7. So now let's label my sides. <clears throat> we'll let my hypotenuse, we'll label hypotenuse. Remember, that's the side across from the right angle. Here's my theta. So the side across from that, the square root of 13, will be the opposite. The side next to it will be the adjacent. So let's go ahead and write some ratios now. The sine is always the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is always the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then the tangent is always the square root of 13 over 6. And that is how you find the trigonometric ratios. So take a little break here. This is part one of your homework. I want you to go and just do the first nine questions on your homework. So this is just numbers one through nine on your homework.